Hey YouTube, welcome to Higher Math Solutions. This week's tutorial is going to go over how to solve definite integrals, also with u substitution. If I have a definite integral from a to b of a composite function, then when we do our u substitution and change all of my x's to u's, we end up with this function right here. You also, though, have to change the a and b as well. And so we can say that's g of a to g of b. It's very important that you remember to change your interval as well. These are all everything in terms of x's, including the interval from a to b, which are x values. And so if we change everything to u's, we also have to change our a to b in terms of u as well. So let's do some examples. Let's do the definite integral from 0 to 1 of 4 over x plus 3 squared. This function right here is not one of your rules, but it is a composite function, and so you will need to use u substitution to solve it. So my u is going to be x plus 3. What you do next is you're going to take the derivative of this u in terms of x, which would be 1. And then I'm going to multiply the dx over to the other side. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to substitute everything in terms of u. So the 4 will stay. x plus 3 is now u. So that's u squared now. And dx is now equal to du. So I'm going to change that as well. But at this step right here, do not put 0 to 1 on the interval because that is wrong. These are in terms of x, and this is now in terms of u. So to get these in terms of u, you're going to take the a, and you're going to go plug it into your u equation. So if I plug 0 into u, I get 3, and that is your new a. And then take your b and go plug it into u, and you get 4, and that is your new b. And this is now the complete uh, u substitution including the definite interval product. After you get here, then you're going to integrate using the FDC. You need to bring the, this power of a 2 up to the top before you can integrate. And then you can solve using the power rule. So you're going to add 1. And then you're going to divide by negative 1, but instead of dividing, I'm going to go ahead and just put the negative in front. And then I will put the vertical bar from 3 to 4, and now I'm going to apply the FTC. So let me erase some. At this point, make sure you do not plug x plus 3 back into your u, uh, because since we do have a definite interval, you're just going to go ahead and apply the FTC, which is plugging in the b and then plugging in the a. If you were to plug the x plus 3 back in, you would have to revert back to the original a and b. So make sure you just keep it as a u. So the FTC states you're going to plug in 4 first, and then minus. Now you're going to plug in the a. And then I'm going to simplify it some. Negative 1 power means that you bring it underneath. Minus the negative is a positive. Again, 3 to the negative 1 means you bring it underneath. And I'm left with negative 1 plus 4 thirds. And then you can get a common denominator. And we end up with a positive 1 third as your final answer. Let's do one more. Let's do the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of sine squared of x times cosine of x. In this case, we have two trig functions, sine and cosine, and one of them is raised to a power. Whenever you're doing an integral involving this with sine and cosine, you're going to pick your u to be the trig function that is raised to the power. So in this case, sine is the one raised to the power, so I'm going to pick sine to be the u. After you pick your u, you're now going to take the derivative of u with respect to x, 
which in this case is cosine, and then multiply the, x to the dx to the other side. And this works out great because cosine of dx, which is right here, is now all going to be substituted as just du. And so what I'm going to end up with is the antiderivative. Sine of x is now u, but you still include the power, so it's going to be u to the power of 2. And then this whole part of the, tri of the trig function here is going to be gone, and I'm just going to replace it with du. So this is going to be your function in terms of u. Now do not forget, again, do not put 0 to pi over 4 because that is not correct. You need to replace 0 to pi over 4 as u's as well. So again, you take your u equation and you plug in the a. So if I plug 0 into sine, I still get 0. And then you're going to plug your b into your u equation. So sine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. So 0 to square root of 2 over 2 is your new a and b. After you get here, now you're ready to integrate and apply the FTC. I'm going to use the power rule, so u to the power of 2, I'm going to add 1 and then divide by it. But instead of putting a plus c, I'm going to go ahead and write my vertical bar with the a and b on there. Again, remember, do not plug u back in. So this is not sine cubed of x over 3. It's just u cubed because I already changed the a and b. You keep it as a u, and now you apply the FTC, which is you plug in the b value first. And then you're going to plug in the 0 which is zero. And then you can just plug, you can just uh, reduce this a little bit. So I'm just reducing the number a little bit and my final answer will be square root of two over 12. Thanks for watching Higher Math Solutions. See you next time.